these are my friends. Come along with me, see how the story ends. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Professional Hippies. Hey, have you ever been interested in what flow states are, like the science behind being in flow? Well, if that is piquing your curiosity, today we have a very esteemed professional hippie, Dr. Evan Johnson. Before we get to him, we're the professional hippies. We like to bridge the gap between kind of a hippie woo-woo and making something yourself. Whatever success means to you in life, we like to bridge the gap somewhere in the meaty middle. Our episode today is brought to you by Test Kit Plus. If you are wanting to experiment with your psyche, it's very important to stay safe while doing so. Head on over to testkitplus.com forward slash professional hippies, and they've got you covered on anything and everything that you might be wanting to put in your body that you should question before you ingest it. Test it before you ingest it. Testkitplus.com forward slash professional hippies. So introducing our guest today, Dr. Evan Johnson. Very excited to have you here, brother. Is it okay if I do a little bit of a professional introduction for you? Oh, yeah. I think, Thank you so much, man. Yeah, I love that. It sounds good. All right. Because I love the way that you sum this up and paraphrasing it a little bit. Dr. Evan Johnson is a flow science, scientist and key performance coach, a three-time published author, international keynote speaker, sharing the stage with some some uh, someone you might know, Deepak Chopra, and speaking on stages such as TEDx, some of the other stages being shared with some of the biggest artists and musicians. He's a teamwork specialist, a master human connection, and transformational focused leader. There's a lot to get into here, so I don't want to take it up all with explaining his accolades, but more so allowing his story to speak for itself. Dr. Evan, how you doing, brother? What's up, guys? And and hello to all the listeners out there. Yeah, I'm super honored and, and grateful to be here and looking forward to have this conversation and get to know you guys more as well and see what we can dive into. Yeah, we're happy to have you on as well, Dr. Evan. Man, I was looking up some of your, uh, you know, what you're teaching, your TED Talk. Got to watch that. You got the whole crowd dancing at a TED Talk. That was pretty that was pretty neat. That's pretty, you don't get to see that too often <laughs> on those. Yeah, they said, right? They said that was the first time that's ever been done in TEDx history. And I said, yeah, I kind of have to do it then. I, I let them know before they knew that that was going to happen. <laughs> and when they told me that, I was like, well, I really like this must happen. This I must bring this to life. And yeah, people were dancing, <laughs> man. It was a lot of fun. I got pretty I sweaty, saw. though. Yeah, I got sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> You were throwing up some moves out there. Now all the speakers beforehand were like, "We could do. We could have done crowd involvement. What? Like now you set a standard. Everyone coming on now. They, they added yeah, an doing extra workouts. page to the waiver for you on that one. They're like, okay, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> they get like a fitness trainer to come on. They're gonna be like, we're gonna have to tone it down now, guys. <laughs> Man, the hardest part you- was they told me I needed to stay on that that red dot. You know, because TEDx, TEDx events, yeah. all the speakers, they stand on the huge red carpet, the red dot that's on the middle of the stage. Otherwise, I would have been, who knows what else I would have been doing, handstands, <laughs> cartwheels, like, who knows what I would have done. You felt like you, it looked like you were holding back. There was a lot of energy, just like, you you looked like you wanted to go in the crowd and just like, like a talk show host, just talking to them <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah, TEDx that's has awesome. some pretty specific frameworks to follow but i hope that that tedx stage will allow me opportunities where i can go in the crowd and and see what's possible out there so that's i love that you said that that's something i might have to <laughs> take a look into making that happen let's step it up tedx let them, let them go in the crowd crowd work <laughs> yeah we'll how to, you feel we'll have to link that tedx as well too in the show notes so everyone else can yeah. go check it out <laughs> yeah thank you thank you for that how are you feeling today Dr. Evan, you feel, I mean, your background looks like you're in a beautiful place. I'm, I presume feeling pretty good today. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah. I feel great. Yeah. Like I was, I was saying before we hopped on this podcast, you know, I, I don't typically wear my hair down, but today we've just been like creating <laughs> a lot. You know, I'm, I've been off social media for the last three and a half years. So I'm back on social media. I'm creating more mm-hmm. content and 
I, right now I'm in the Midwest, and yeah, it's beautiful outside. The sun's about to set behind me, or you know, and and the sun, you're gonna see it coming down on my face as we go through this conversation. So I feel good. I feel happy. I feel super grounded, and just love you know having incredible conversations like this. At the end of the day, it's one of my favorite things to do. And so I'm grateful for you guys having me on here and, and appreciate your energies as well. This is going to be a fun combo. Yeah, man. And to set like a little bit of um, context for the conversation, cause I think that's important with what you do, especially like I love that Dylan asked, like, how are you feeling? Because I feel as if and that's totally a double entendre, but I feel as if what you do is so much about regulating feelings, regulating emotions and teaching people structure behind how to do that right so and i'm kind of making a little bit of an assumption here but I, i'm wanting you to kind of color that in for us so like what is it that you do and and, and how are feelings impacted emotions states like kind of give us some some guidance around articulating what it is that you do yeah yeah i appreciate that yeah you know growing up i was a super emotional child and and never really learned how how to navigate that and so throughout my life i ended up going to athletics and sports as my my greatest level of expression and embodiment and, and creativity was always on the field or on the court right and so throughout my life i knew that i could turn to movement or different practices of, of self-expression to both play play the game of life you know enjoy what it really meant to engage with athletics and sports, but also I knew there was something deeper happening of me processing my emotions and, and getting more connected to myself. And I went through a huge period of time in my life where I, I lost a lot of weight. You know, my father was like, look, man, you can either keep going down this path and, and this is what's probably going to happen, or you can choose something new. And if you want to play basketball and lacrosse in college, you're probably going to have to choose this path. And I was like, cool, let's do it. And so I ended up after that moment losing a lot of weight. And so emotional regulation, optimal health and well-being has just been something that has really impacted my life, you know, from the very core of who I am to what I'm getting into now. And my background is in healthcare. And throughout my time in healthcare, I started to see incredible results with people, you know, physiologically, neurologically, whether I was working with them on their diet and nutrition, or if physical pain and dysfunction, or really anything that was coming up, it could have been problems with their organ systems, really any aspect of their health and well being. And I started to recognize, like, even at the end of the day, there were a select population of people that would rely on me as a, a band-aid thinking that I was going to fix their issues or their problems or there was more that we needed to get into that wasn't in my scope of practice so that ties in the emotional and and intellectual and spiritual components and these other dimensions of health and well-being that aren't exactly focused on or talked about in traditional healthcare so what that has come down to is I've narrowed it down into what I'm focused on right now is flow science and peak performance and how flow science and peak performance is so related to different biohacking techniques, uh, human optimization, and even connecting to the divine as well. Because it's all about if the full immersion into the moment and, and being fully present with whatever is happening and with whatever's coming up, whether that's emotional and habitual tendencies about who a person is or if it's something else related to business or really any aspect of life what we do in flow science in peak performance is we help people navigate those things remove blockages increase their connections to flow triggers and different things that they know can help them drop into deeper levels of flow state ultimately to get people to what i always focused on in my life and in healthcare which is helping people live a better quality life at the end of the day. That's what we all want. So that's where things are at right now in my life. I'm having a blast doing it. You know, I tell people all the time, like with what I'm doing right now and the expansions that are happening, I'm like so freaking scared and I'm having a lot of fun. So I know I'm in the right place. So that's awesome that you say that like yeah. you, you're, you're uh, there's so many things are rocky right now, but you know, that's a place of growth. 
Yeah. Not, not, not many people recognize that. So it's awesome that you already recognize that. And, and, and wanted to f- ask a question, a follow-up question to that. You know, you mentioned you were, you were in school, you know, you, you had a, 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 something triggered with your dad, of course, that you were like, Hey, I need to get in shape. If I want to do this, you went on to college to play school. And I assume at that level, you're recognizing how to be healthy. You're recognizing how to eat right. You're being surrounded by people at trainers, everything like that as well. Where was it that you said, you know, where was it that you started to recognize, Hey, there's another level to this that is not bringing, being brought into the picture of living a healthy life. You know, you, you talked about the spiritual aspect, the feelings of, of oneself, you know, cause at, at that point, a lot of people think at, at a college level of sports, mm-hmm. you can't get much more healthier than that, you know, almost. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's a great question. Yeah. There, I think there was a couple different things that happened throughout my collegiate career. The first one was the, the, at that point in time, extremely painful uh, recognition that the ball doesn't bounce forever, you know? And so there Mm -hmm. was going to be a time when like, I wasn't going to be putting jerseys on every day and and going to practice and that I was going to need to focus on the rest of my life. And with that came an even deeper understanding of, okay, well, that means what does financial health and well-being look like for me? You know, and and at that point in time, my trainers, you know, these people in in the therapy rooms, they were telling me to get into these ice baths every day. And at that point, I was like, great. Yeah, cool. Time for an ice bath again. (laughs) I think now they're actually harder for me now and they never really get easier. You know, we kind of just (laughs) get crazier. And it and it it you know what I mean? Like these (laughs) things that I always did, they have a new symbolic meaning now. And so. I started to realize like, wow, this ice bath thing is actually really tough. Why is it so tough? Really, it's just about me connecting to my breath. And so Mm -hmm. I started to recognize that. And I got a job when I was in college working, you know, in the athletics facility, you know, a super like super cake job that all the athletes got hooked up with the best jobs and like so grateful for that. But, you know, these these kind of changes started to happen that weren't so focused on my my athletics and physical performance, it started to open me up to other things. And that I think was one of the biggest catalysts for me to start to engage with these different kinds of behaviors and really connecting with ice baths in a new way, connecting with meditation. And I remember doing some meditations when I was like a junior in college for the first time, you know, being born and raised in the Midwest, it's not really something that that's in our textbooks out here, you know, (laughs) meditation and things like that. So you know, I think it was uh, just an expansive process of me recognizing that, like, I wasn't always going to be a college athlete, and I needed to just make some changes and discover what those were. So, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Yeah, oh, no, and it opens definitely. up a, a whole bunch of other ones, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, yeah. So. What comes up for me is I love like the vulnerability in that too, of just recognizing kind of where you're at. And, um, and I would assume based on the conversations we've had with with traveling, you know, like what's brought you back from being off social media for three and a half years, right? Like what, what's brought you back to a state where you're like, Hey, I'm, I'm wanting to embrace some, some other frontiers, some other edges. Um, just kind of catch us up to speed with, you know, some of these transitions, it sounds like that have been playing out for you over the last couple of months. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yes. When I initially got off social media, I was I had my own traditional healthcare practice and I really wasn't fulfilled like at all. I, I was crushing it and, and it was great. And I was living up to these expectations about what it meant to be a doctor, what it meant to be in traditional society and have a healthcare practice. And at the same time, like I was in no capacity living this intrinsic fulfillment that I knew was possible that thought leaders, experts, ancient gurus always talked about, whether it was spiritual or or emotional or any aspect of life. It wasn't happening for me. So in that, I started seeking the external world for validation or for 
the, to discover a new form of medicine or for the answers. And with that being said, I started to get addicted to social media. So at that point in time, I was everything that I was doing was just based around like, how was I being perceived in the world? I was totally reliant on how many likes I was getting and, and what my social media was doing. And yeah, people were like, oh my gosh, like, Dr. Evan, like, who is this guy? He's talking about some cool things and like the body heals itself and, and all this stuff that were really people were receiving it really well. But I was so addicted that I needed to go through this massive, like seismic transformation of deleting social media and getting rid of it and going through this three and a half year process of discovering myself, traveling the world, you know, engaging with different psychedelics, connecting with new types of people, communities, uh, exploring new forms of medicine within myself, movement, you know, all these different things. And as of recently, we, you know, I, I wrote three and a half books over the last three and a half years, essentially. And wow. yeah, and, and that has been really successful. You know, I launched my first round of books in nine different countries, and it was really great. And I did that without social media. And I landed this TEDx talk without social media. However, now there's coming a time where technology is is actually a super powerful modality that can help me impact even more people you know so i'm recognizing that and i'm recognizing the people that i'm meeting have opportunities for me that are much greater than what i could imagine that i could engage with if i was on social media or back into the technological world whether that's huge stages that i could speak on or different podcasts or collaborations with brands uh you know influencers things like that so it's just getting to the point where like the the pounding beat of my heart and my purpose and, and my mission in this world is so massive that if i don't get on social media and impact the world in a greater way i'm just gonna back in that place of like, who am I really? I'm not fulfilled, you know? So it's just coming to that edge of like, yeah, it's uncomfortable for me, but I know I need to do it to, to help more people. So uh, with that, there's like a commitment to new levels of work that come for me because it, it's so new for me again. And I was so addicted to it that I'm getting to like experience the growth that has happened since you know rejoining social media a couple weeks ago so uh does that answer your question yeah definitely the, the and if you're listening at home too, dylan and i are both like nodding our head <laughs> go ahead dylan i just yeah, thought it was cool yeah, seeing us is... both bobbling we're like fuck yeah man <laughs> i want to i want to i want to dive a little bit deeper even so because i would say most people would say they're probably have some addiction to social media right <clears throat> in whatever way it could be yours is pretty interesting because you recognize you wanted to do this path, uh, a business path, right? And, and, a, and a pretty good one and starting your own health business. And you said you were getting pretty good at it. And a lot of times you need social media to help grow that type of business, right? And, and grow your brand. And so you started doing that. And a lot of people will say they get addicted to it just from scrolling. Whereas yours was more addicted to it of like trying to grow your brand. And then you were like, this isn't where I'm going down. You're, it seems like you had it in the right mind. You're like, I'm, I, I'm kind of going in the right direction, but I'm not. And so now you had to pull that back, right? Usually that's a, I've never heard that I got addicted from growing the brand. I've heard addicted from scrolling. And so now I, you know, I'm curious because if you're, you're coming out of it, you still need, you might want to grow your brand. Are you going to do it, try to do it a different way now that you're coming back out of social media? Through the, I mean, th three books in three years is pretty incredible in itself. Like that's, I mean, that's a perfect way to grow outside of social media. But I'm just curious of that because a lot of business minded people would say like, well, that's what you're going to have to come back and do anyways. So I'm just curious how, what's the growth plan now you're coming out of it what what is it that you're you've come to terms with yourself as you went and explored the world and figured yourself out i guess mm -hmm. yeah i love that yeah it's a really good question too yeah you're right man it was it was a lot about like my identity what the the addictions came from like how like once again how was i being perceived how did it relate to my identity and 
the thoughts and belief systems and concepts about who I was and how I was showing up in the world. And that's where like I, I started to experience like, okay, like this just isn't resonating anymore. So that's also super connected to what I'm focused on nowadays, which is in in the science of flow and peak performance, we talk about a concept called transient hypofrontality, which is essentially the the moments in time or the periods in time when uh, an individual essentially transcends their current concepts and belief systems of their identity and the prefrontal cortex actually goes on autopilot you know and and, and the identity sort of dissolves right and these are, are also spiritual concepts and the great mysteries of life around dissolving the ego and these different, you know, belief systems that we could dive into. But first, I want to just explain that that is also something that never really goes away because we can always drop into even deeper levels of flow state. So once again, even though I was off social media mm -hmm. and transcended my current identity at that time to become this new person and, and start to engage with new people, places and things that were resonant with me, there's still this process of, okay, what does it mean for me now? And, and how do I leverage this to make a greater impact? So with that, yeah, I, I think I've spent three and a half years exploring these different ways to connect to my identity and how I can show up in the world and make a massive positive impact. And so bringing that into this social media framework now or growing my brand, you know, it's it's super fun because people all the time are like, how are you doing this? Like, how'd you have a 30K month without social media? And I'm like, there's always a way. Like, you know, if I know one thing, mm -hmm. it's that it, there's always a way. And and the potency of the connections that we make and the decisions that we make and the words we speak can create anything in this life. And now I'm almost like, hmm, how is this going to work with social media again? Because I have been away for, from it for so long. Um, it's sparking a new level of discomfort and curiosity that other people are actually super comfortable with. Whereas I feel like I'm mm -hmm. on the complete opposite side. So the other things are things that I really know how to do now. And, and the social media world mm -hmm. is like, for me, it's like, it's totally new, you know? And somebody asked me the other day, they're like, I want to do an Instagram live with you and all this stuff. I'm like, cool. Like send me a calendar invite. Like, <laughs> what, what do you what do you mean like let's how's this gonna work what are we gonna talk about you know is there an application like all this stuff that... oh because everything's like fast over the past three years there's been so many updates and improvements to it i guess like yeah you just kind of forget how to use the platforms in itself yeah You're like I, and it sounds like too in the when you were in the beginning you were it sounds like you were following a pattern, right? Like, this is how you do it. This is how you get the likes. This is how you do it. I read up on social media and this is how it is. And it sounds like you were let, you were, you didn't like how you were being shaped by what everyone else was doing. You were just getting mm -hmm. cookie cutter results. And then you were like, I have to figure out how to do this on my own before making the social media thing work. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, totally. And that happens in society a lot anyways, and in yeah. many different aspects and paradigms at which society operates, those kinds of things always come into play and, and uniqueness and celebrating the uniqueness of an individual is always, I think, one of the most mm -hmm. important things that we can do as humankind. And that's really where a lot of medicine lies and innovation and creativity and even more growth in the world, whether it's social justice, environmental sustainability, or biotech you know that if we keep operating from the same belief systems we're going to get the same thing so i'm all for these new types of expressing in the world and people doing things in their own ways because that's really what brings life to the the greatest of movements or businesses or opportunities for people to come together and celebrate something greater than what we are as individuals because to me that's what matters the most So we're just going to go ahead and end the podcast now. I think <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, I, I want to kind of just highlight some things in that. I mean, I especially love, Hey, if we don't change our, uh, beliefs or where we're operating from, like the our reality doesn't change. Uh, that's, that's definitely noteworthy, but also just kind of unpacking, um, 
what's going on there when you step away and have a chance to what I would call it, develop hard skills instead of soft skills. Like one of the unique things about social media is that it's changing so quickly all the time. Like it, people have full-time jobs just to keep up with it. So the nice thing that I appreciate about your journey is you, you took away to like work on your hardware, right? Like yeah. how to interface with people, how to have like referral based conversations or how to sit down and, and concentrate your mind to mm -hmm. get a book out of your head three times over, right? Like those are, those are things that require real configuration of how you're moving through your days, moving through your weeks and months. Whereas social media is software, right? You can just sit down and kind of come up to speed on that pretty quickly if you're intentional about it. So I love that it seems like when you take a step back that there was something going on in the surface. You decided, hey, I need to take the lid off of this, go into myself. And that's what I'm curious about. If someone out there was finding themselves in the same position and they're like, hey, I'm down a road that I feel like I've gone too far down and I'm getting rewarded for it, but I don't feel aligned with it. What would your advice be to them? What are some practical steps you could share with someone to take a step back, reevaluate, Maybe it's not for three, three and a half years uh, from, you know, whatever, but um, kind of run with that. What, what comes up for you? Yeah, yeah. That's a really great question. There's a lot of different ways, like, I can take this question, and there's also some humor that wants to come out of me, it, it, probably within the next, like, five, five or six, seven minutes, which, yeah, I'm excited for that because that's, especially, you know, in professional <laughs> you got it, daddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, I love it. I love it. We're going to roll with it. The, the biggest thing that I like to focus on when I'm talking with people that are having these kinds of breakthroughs or experiences is we start with their belief systems. And, and first, we, we dive really deeply into their belief systems about who they are and the ways they're showing up in the world, you know. Whether we're talking about these, you know, specifically new age concepts of epigenetics and quantum physics and all these different things, at the end of the day, they always come down to who are people, who, who is the individual at the level of the cell? And, and whoever they are at the level of the cell influences who they are at the level of the self, right? So we have different thoughts and belief systems and concepts about who they are and how they show up in the world that influences their bodies, that influences their nervous systems, their heart, and the ways they live their life. So we like to focus on those deeply rooted belief systems or, or even subconscious programs that root back to childhood, that root back to their relationships with their communities or their school systems or their mother and father. And you know, it doesn't matter what concept of modern psychology we're talking about. Most of us have a lot of love and growth and expansion that we can uncover there. So that's what I typically start with is really taking a look at people's belief systems. And then I like to say, great, this is great. Now, if people are committed to doing the work, it's all possible. Because if someone has the correct belief systems about really who they want to become or the life they want to live, whether it's making a lot of money, traveling the world, having their dream relationship, you know, whatever that is to them, it's all possible, right? And the commitment is one of the most powerful and potent things that an individual could do because, you know, as a, as a coach, as a consultant, as an expert in any field, all we can really do is light the fire, it's it's the individual that really has to tend to the fire and keep it lit and grow it and light other people's fires and really expand into movements or or help other people live their greatest expression of who they are. We can only hold the door open. They're the ones that have to walk through it. So I like to just go straight to the deepest core values of, of who an individual is and make reorganizations happen there first. And then everything else beyond that is is actually quite easy, you know, because it's such a physiological shift 
that people within themselves believe in so much without any any external validation or seeking the outside world that it's just bound to happen. It's just a matter of time. And then if they can catch a vision long enough for what is truly possible, it's going to come to life. You know, it can really be no other way because the brain wants to make sense of reality. It wants to bend reality based on someone's highest expression. It wants to reorganize into higher levels of existence and consciousness. And so I think when we take people through that simple process, they can expand into the complexities of reality and, and everything else that comes with it. I don't, when you're, when you're saying all that too, I feel like that is so hyper aware when you're at like a music festival, Mm. all of that, because everyone's off of social media everyone's really a hyper aware of what's going on around them and trying to make sense of everything that you really just kind of feel that energy because everyone's doing it all in this one place. And then once they leave, they make that decision if they want to continue doing that after they leave this place. Cause usually you don't have, you know, cell phone signal for the most part at the good, at the good festivals, you don't have cell phone signal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, especially, you know, I spent, Two years ago, I spent seven days on Playa. I went out to Burning Man. There's totally no cell phone service out there, like whatsoever. We were there last year. Yeah, you guys get it. There's also no bathrooms. And so, or running water (laughs) or any of those kinds of things, which creates its own complexities and and immersive opportunities to understand oneself. You know, and at the end of the day, that is what music festivals do a lot of times. And they create experiences and opportunities for people to radically transform who they are and connect to something greater. You know, music has been used since ancient times. Communities come together and celebrate life and and, and death. You know, I posted about this today, actually, like celebrations are some of the greatest intrinsic rites of passage experiences that people can ex- can have, that they can experience because most people will go to a festival whether it's three days, seven days, or even longer, and they'll become someone new because they'll immerse into a new environment and meet new people. And when the environment is in in resonance with that just intention of like, cool, we're all going to come here and we're going to see what's possible. Talk about edges being explored, belief systems shattering, and a whole lot of fun being had. Like music festivals, I think are going to. I think be you were describing like, the orgy dome. By the way, yes. I think I saw that on the orgy dome billboard when I went by. <laughs> Some like that was somewhere in the way. Continue, continue. But I just, yeah. I'm giving yeah. them. The, that was definitely in the pamphlet somewhere for uh-huh. sure. Yeah, that I believe it. I believe it. I don't think two years ago. I don't think I was able to make it make it into the orgy dome. However. There, I've you had don't some think? I feel like you would know. I year, feel like that'd be a confident. <laughs> yeah. He, he returned. He returned. He's like Doctor Evans back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, this oh, is good. Man. Yeah, it's just like that, though. It's like even with that, you know. There's what I love about this podcast too, and and what you guys are doing is uh, giving people an opportunity to really break the molds of traditional society and what people think is supposed to happen and how we're supposed to operate this existence because there's a mm-hmm. part of me that's like ah you know three and a half years ago i would have been like well i can't be talking about like burning man and orgy domes like on a podcast but now there's this part of me that's like if i don't just talk about who i am and and who authentically what wants to come through i'm actually doing a huge disservice to people that could be where I was three and a half years ago, or even where I am right now. And at the end of the day, we all want to experience the greatest ecstasies and and fulfillments and successes of life. And yeah, festivals like that allow orgy domes and psychedelics (laughs) and lots of music and connection and play and fun are incredible places for that to happen. So yeah, man. And I appreciate the reflection because um, I, th- I think it's it's really sweet and totally the nectar of the universe for you attempting to do some of the work you're doing. And 
uh, again, reflecting back, just to point to a thought you shared just a moment ago um, around catching a vision, right? Like when you had to take some space to go find yourself, one of the things that came up in me when you were talking about that, when I did you know, a bit of a soul quest, finding myself backpacking through countries, what I found was kind of the, the cliche of, hey, I need to find myself really turned out to be like, I didn't find shit when I went on those trips because wherever I went, there I was. Like that's a landmark mm. motto, right? So wherever I went, I still had the same problems because my belief systems were being, like there was information coming in that was changing the way I thought about the world. But at the root, I was still the same dude with the same echo chamber going on. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is because I love what you said, catch a vision. And I think it's people don't necessarily look to find themselves. They look to find a vision that's compelling. And to tag onto that, when you said it's your belief, and I tend to resonate with this belief that when we discombobulate ourselves and break things down, our body wants to reorganize into the, the highest version of consciousness possible. And so I think when we're looking to find ourselves, it's really we're looking to find a vision that's compelling for us to stoke a fire, that's compelling for us to work through challenge. And I, I tend to totally agree. I'm just doubling down on what you shared and just kind of highlighting that because I think it's important to say like, hey, that, that you're not necessarily, you're not lost, right? But maybe you don't have a compelling vision that's pulling you through the bullshit in life. And that's what needs yeah. to be found. And that, that's just my perspective, but I'm curious, you know, what you think of that. Yeah, I love that, man. I really love that. And what that, what Thanks, that brings man. up for you. me is, yeah, it's like, <laughs> what'd you say? What? <laughs> not that it's cool. <laughs> I really didn't. Said I love you, bro. I love you, bro. Oh, I love you too. I love you too. I love the both of you guys. You know, that's, that's like another thing is like, as men here in this world like we're, we're also here to bring the love and a part of bringing the love is being able to like what you stated uh, assign meaning to things that really matter to us and what matters to us is what we assign a meaning to so in the search for something new it's this actual intrinsic search of deeper meaning you know it, almost to the point where if something else happened that didn't really mean anything or didn't have that total like intrinsic fire being lit, we would keep searching, you know, quote unquote, we would keep seeking until we think we found it. But really, at the end of the day, it can happen in any moment when we just choose to assign a new meaning to an aspect of ourselves or an aspect of our life. And in doing so, we shift who we are physiologically, neurologically. We even shift the genetic markers inside of ourselves. And that creates a whole new level of expression, almost a remembrance, actually, that it could actually be that easy. And sometimes we just choose to travel the world while we do it because we're super radical and that's the generation we live in. But I think there on the frontier of this is understanding how big we can possibly go in moments like that and, and what kinds of meanings we want to assign to different aspects of our life. Because if there's one thing that I know, it's that the power is within us and it's inside us and it always has been and it always will be. And so like what you stated there, there wasn't really ever something that you were seeking because wherever you went, there you were. And there, and there were your emotions and, and there were the, the concepts and belief systems that you were living by. And anyone who has went through a massive transformation would probably say that they've experienced that to some capacity. I think the journey is learning how to do that more rapidly and, and more intentionally creating, uh, disorganization for more harmony and coherence to come to life you know mm. have, you, have you ever read the book stealing fire i have not no it, it, what you just talked about uh, you had said like uh, you were describing how 
you know, we're kind of stepping outside the comfort zone. You find oneself. And then you yeah. said like, you guys kind of did it, you know, by while traveling. And that was an interesting thing that you said, because a lot of people think that the traveling is where people usually do it. But you were saying while traveling, right? So you were already going to do this thing. You just decided along with it, I'm going to do it on this high adventure as well, right? And Sealing Fire, it's kind of talking about the way where people are living and working these days to be able to step outside the comfort zone. It actually talks about Burning Man within it as well, which is pretty Mm -hmm. cool. And it talks about the Navy SEALs and how they kind of do things also leap themselves to outside the comfort zone in order to keep growing what they're doing. Right. And so it's interesting that you said while, while traveling. Right. And so I'm curious if what, what are examples maybe that you've seen with others? Cause you know, if you're doing it, you've probably run into other people that are doing this, right? What are ways that you might've seen people that could do this? Maybe they don't have the means to travel, right? Maybe they, they, they just don't have the means to do it, but they want to be able to step outside and have this growth opportunity, you know, what, are, what have you seen in those realms? Yeah. Yeah. That's a super great question. Really great question because I think it's just a part of human nature for people to want mm-hmm. to evolve and, mm-hmm. and grow and, and become someone new. But yeah, when people don't have the means or when they don't even have the, the, they don't even understand that it's, it's possible to travel while they're doing that or at least they think the traveling is the thing that's going to do that or the next ceremony or really the next book or really anything i would say it comes down to more of the foundational aspects of how they relate with other humans and what i mean by that is if people can understand how to communicate consciously how to uh, express boundaries how to um, set themselves up emotionally, physically, spiritually in their environment and in the people that are closest to them that is going to support their expansion. I would say a lot of it is what the stuff that happens when we travel. You know, we have the time and spaciousness to step into a new embodiment or we get to learn and not be influenced by other people. We get to step into deeper levels of sovereignty and freedom, find our own paths and gifts and talents and skills. And when that gets combined with an intention to live a greater life, I think there's a lot of possibilities out there, you know, regardless of where someone is, whether they're, you know, living at home with their family or they're living in in an ashram, you know, a tantric ashram. I think, it's all possible with these types of more foundational concepts. You play video games? I did when I was a child. A lot of video games that had to do with uh, sports and athletics and Mm -hmm. racing cars. And uh, Did that change as you got older to different types of video games, like RPG or anything like that? Or did you just kind of give, you know, grow up out of those as well? I'm just curious because you... Like a lot of people you're doing a lot of people that are doing a lot of traveling and doing all this don't usually have the time to play video games, but they usually did in the past. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, my my most recent recollections of video games are playing like uh, PSP when I was like (laughs) on like five hour bus rides going to like athletic events like if i if i was going to a basketball tournament that i had i would like drop in and like play psp or game boy or something like that and that's like my most recent memory that i have but really like when i started to to get into high school and high school athletics instead of playing mm-hmm. video games i used to like sneak into gyms at 3 a.m and get detentions because i was so committed to like putting this ball in this orange hole and getting a scholarship mm-hmm. that I really wasn't focused on like video games and parties and all that stuff. I was just so committed to, to athletics. Yeah. So when you, you know, over the past few years, I'm just curious, like, curious, curious, like, you know, a lot of people, since you're not on social media, a lot of people would go probably to video games 
that's your next thing, right? For your downtime. Like what's your, what's your downtime, right? Like it sounds like you're all this self-aware. Are you reading a book? Are you going to the beach? I like, I'm just curious, like what's, what's your, what's Dr. Evans downtime look like? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's a good question. No, I don't read many books. I'm so, I don't know if you guys are familiar with human design. Are you, do you know human design? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not so familiar. my human design is I'm, I'm a projector and I love learning about these concepts. And of course there's not one way to, to do things, but it's actually not in my design to read books. I was told that by like mm-hmm. this super high level, like human design specialist that I trust. They were like, yes, don't read books. Like you're actually meant to like experience, like immerse into experiences and learn and learn the hard way sometimes if you need to like Be your the energy. Book. What? <laughs> don't read the book be the book yeah um. like that's what they told me so i actually haven't been reading a lot of books the last couple of years however i do go through phases of like i try to follow natural phenomena in most things that i do cycles and waves and fractals of consuming information and and then integrating it and then like going back into like learning and, and consuming more information and then but i would say you know for the most part like things that I love to do instead of reading or playing video games or being on social media all the time is acro yoga is huge for me. I I love doing acro yoga. It's one of my favorite ways to play and, and connect. So anytime I have downtime, I try to understand when that's going to happen, like more on the forefront and prep my days that will help me play and immerse into games of life with other people you know and where i get to experience human connection or i get to go to do random you know capoeira which is like this it's brazilian dance fighting at the end of the day it's just a super fun way to like move the body and so i like to do things is like that, that. Where they're like swinging the legs to like <laughs> kick each other kind of i it's guess really funky looking it's super cool like you're swinging the leg over people's body like that sounds thing. like I don't know, super kinky when you say it like that. Like, <laughs> but that is a kinky yeah, dude basically... you're talking to right there. Be careful. <laughs> We're get Brazilian dance fighting capoeira. There's it's essentially one of the greatest ways that I've found to find the edges of what I can do in terms of of movement because it's super intense and it, there's a lot of flipping and tricking and it's very gymnastics like primal movement based. Uh, type of play. You know? I feel like it's if you took like a static dance and, and gymnast and, and, and combine them, that's kind of, you're getting like this like rhythmic and sometimes yeah. off rhythmic dance moves with, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. And maybe a little bit of like Muay Thai in it, like infused into it too. Dude, you know, it's got it's, everything. It's, it's a buffet. It's a sampler of culture. Yeah. It's fun. And so I would say I just I try to find other ways to play that really matter to me. And I value intimacy. I value uh, fitness and acro yoga and dance and connection. And those kinds of things are just like non-negotiables for me. So I would much rather do things like that than like, I don't know, what are the kids playing these days? Twitch? Like, uh, like, I don't know. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Whatever video game, it's probably on their smartphones now. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I like Angry Birds or something. Angry what's uh? And I feel dumb for asking this. Talking what's, dinosaurs. The both of you should be what's, ashamed. What's acro yoga? What makes that different than hot yoga or regular yoga? <laughs> acro yoga is, you know, it's based in acrobatics. So it's just the idea that. Uh, obviously one individual can do yoga however if you bring two or more individuals together you can explore different poses different types of you know movement flows typically there's a base and there is a flyer and so yeah there's there's some posts on my social media if you want to check out some like pretty oh. crazy posts on there yeah uh you can watch it you can check it out it's actually really hard it's also really great to practice conscious communication trust uh, fitness, health and well-being, because, you know, you're flying someone through the air. Typically, that's super edgy for people. <laughs> and, and so, I, I mean, you would be an incredible base. Both of you guys would. 
if you ever want to get into it. I imagine, Colton, you might have done some in your life, maybe. I've done a little bit. But um, yeah, I was there. I mean, there's a lot of comments you make on that. It's super cool. <laughs> and um, sounds like some Cirque du Soleil type of thing. It's got elements that it's just like, dude, I don't know. It, it looks really cool. And I see people doing it in the park here in Austin all the time. Yeah. But yeah, it's like flowy. But like, I mean, you can picture like uh, the men are typically bases and women will, you know, be on their feet or hands. And um, it, yeah, it's. Really That's kind of neat, though. It's a two-part yoga. You know, I, when I think of yoga, I think of like yourself, Zen, stretching, figuring things out. But acro is a two-person type You're of You're working them tiny muscles. That's for sure. Those little stabilizers get worked. Yeah, the so. first time I started doing it, I, I could barely do it. My hamstrings weren't flexible enough to like support someone and hold them in the air. My legs were shaking. I was so embarrassed. I was like, fuck, you know, I can't even, like, support this woman with my legs. Like, who am I? You know, it was, like, this whole process. And everyone else is like, chicken legs, chicken legs. They're probably (laughs) booing you. (laughs) Totally true. Facts. I bet you're hella good on the, uh, you always see the people on the string. Slack line. And they're just slack Mm -hmm. line. Yeah. I feel like you're probably solid on that. Like, you probably can jump and bounce on that thing. I actually haven't done a lot of slackline. And I, I, I just got back from Envision Festival, which is a festival down in Costa Rica. And I set Ooh, this cool. huge intention like for myself to explore edges. And one way that I was wanting to do that was to try slacklining and talk about like dropping me into some flow state. I was like, <laughs> it was intense. You know, it was like, <laughs> It was intense because I was like, if I do anything, I, I had one above me too. I was holding a line above me, so it was helping me stay, stay balanced. But if I didn't have that, I would have like just crashed on the earth. <laughs> yeah, that slack line will bring up some edges, all right. And you're like, you're not wanting to fall off either side, and you're definitely not wanting to fall straight down. <laughs> Man, I've been I've been at a music festival watching him do it, and they always look at you like, come on, come on, get over here, and you're like, no. Nah. Not, not, not. Slackliners are anybody. what we thought the the dare program in school when we thought <laughs> they would force us to smoke weed or cigarettes. Like like people were gonna hold you down and make you smoke drugs. That's slackliners have like the no you you could do it. Come on, come, come on, on over like here, they have, man. They're Look not bounce. gonna hold you down, and make you do it, but they they want you to be a part of the group. They'll they're bounce like, on. on it. They're like, just look, <laughs> look how, how easy, easy it, it is. is. Look I at can it. Do it. Just sit yeah. on it. Just come sit on it. Right here. <laughs> just bounce on with me. <laughs> oh man. So before we get too far away from it, I love that you you're bringing in edges. So like, what's what's a edge that's alive for you, Evan? That you're actively moving into aside from social mm. media. I think we've gone pretty in depth there. But what are some other edges coming up for you at this point in your life? Yeah, I'd say. That's a great question. You know, entrepreneurship brings its own level of edges and and discomfort. And, you know, through my time of helping uh, 350 plus entrepreneurs, artists, musicians, business owners grow and scale businesses, I've gotten to learn a lot about what it takes. And there's a huge difference of learning about what it takes and then putting it into life. And with mm-hmm. that, it comes a, a whole new level of, you know, nervous system regulation to be able to let even more financial health and well-being come through me, uh, to serve even more people, to capitalize on even greater opportunities, to travel to larger stages that, you know, like, I, I you know, I've, I've done a TEDx talk, but I'm going to tell you, like, the night before my TEDx talk, I was crying. I was literally in the fetal position, like crying. I was like, holy shit, I'm about to step on this stage and like tell my story to the world. It's super edgy. And now it's only going to happen more and more because of the lifestyle that I've decided to choose. And so I would say that's also a big edge for me right now, too, is like getting myself on bigger stages. And and it's less about the stage. It's more about becoming the person that the message needs me to be to stand on that stage is is the edgiest part because that brings growth and change and transformation that and at the end of the day like 
my body's gonna go to that stage regardless. I get to choose how I want to show up on it. You know, if I want to completely botch it and like not not really drop in and, and deliver a great message to the world, or if I want to really own it and do the work that I need to do in order to make that happen, it's not easy, you know, and 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 it's it's also like it, I really wouldn't want it any other way because like I stated before, I'm like. It's terrifying, but I'm having so much fun that uh, I'm I'm just doing my best to live my best life and impact as many people as I can while I do it. Uh, other than that, yeah, you know, acro yoga, dance, you know, I've been really getting into a lot of gymnastics and tricking, which is uh, a lot of times, you know, if I'm dancing or shuffling and I'm like really getting after it, there comes a point in time when my energy is like, okay, like what's next? And typically I want to get airborne somehow. And so I've been trying to learn like how to do some flips and tricks like that, which are really edgy for me and my body. Cause I'm really great when my feet are on the ground, you know, being a college athlete, basketball, lacrosse, I have my feet are on the ground, you know, and I've never been snowboarding or surfing. So I, I don't really have a lot of pathways that have to do with me not having my feet on the ground or my feet being strapped to a board. So getting airborne has been like pretty crazy for my consciousness and, and yeah, just for, for who I am as a person, but I'm loving it. You know, it's these moments of growth that create really long ended connections for me to connect into other aspects of my life too, which, which I'm grateful for. Nice man. <laughs> well, yeah. Hey, that, that got edgy quick. I'm here for it. So, mm -hmm. um, as we kind of settle in here, one question that we love to ask our guest is Dylan, do you want to deliver it or is it, is it my turn? Who's, who's, who's turn? It's your turn it? on this one. Okay. All right. Let's try to make sure I don't botch it. Hey, uh, Evan, what's one thing that you wish more people asked you about? Hmm. Hmm. One thing that I wish more people asked me about. You know, I'd say the 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 biggest thing that I would love people to ask me would have something to do with the legacy that I want to leave on this planet. And not the superficial, how are you feeling? You know, like, it's just, you know, what's going on in your life? Like, I really am, am deeply desiring, like, way, way, way more deep connections and deeper questions that help me reflect on why I'm even here, you know, to begin with. So... Yeah, I'd say something about that, like my legacy. Legacy, you know, I'm 30 years old. I'd say it's a great time for me, right? It's like kind of a great time for me to start thinking about that, I'd say. So, Prime time. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, something about that, for sure. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, um, hey, it's been a fucking honor, bro, to have you on here. Very and, much. <laughs> um, sincerely appreciate your time and this has all of the essence of kind of like a springboard. I know what's coming for you is that it seems like you're going to be lining up some, some really big things. And, um, mm -hmm. we really appreciate you coming on here, sharing your medicine with our community. And if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way for our folks to get in touch with you or to kind of tap in? Yeah, totally. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for, having me here on on the podcast and it's been great getting to know the both of you and i have really enjoyed this conversation though so yeah i really appreciate it and if people want to connect with me they can find me on instagram it's just at become the medicine uh, you can go to my bio and all my links are in my bio my website twitter linkedin facebook all the social media platforms that i'm back on as of a couple weeks ago, you can find there. Holler. And he's back. Yeah, he's back. Yeah. <laughs> and 
yeah, just looking forward to like connecting with the audience and, you know, don't feel, don't feel uh, scared to, to reach out. I'm here to chat, to be a friend, to be a brother, to be an inspiration in, in whatever ways I can and just looking forward to connecting with more people. So. All right, folks. Well, you heard it here first. Uh, feel free to drop into his profile if you want to fill an application for some acro yoga. But I'm sure yeah. there's some mm-hmm. other services in there as well. <laughs> Hey, if you guys love this episode, please <laughs> share it with someone that you think might benefit from it. At the very least, give us some feedback. If that includes a review, we'll love it. All right. Hey, till next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.